All right, 2.4a. Um, this is a two-part assignment. I don't think the second one should be that bad. I think that's just working out some problems. But today is a mix of review and new material. Because your best learning comes from practice, let's just get right to the point. Again, that's the purpose of your videos is not to kill your time. Writing the equations of lines. There are a few options to write an equation of a line. Both of them require the use of slope. There is a point slope formula, but in my lifetime, I have learned that the point slope formula can be very taxing. It's not as efficient as just using the slope intercept formula. If you choose to use the point slope formula, which is, I believe, I don't know, I'm not even going to write it off the top of my head because I never even think about it. To me, the reason I use this is because this is useful in other areas, but that's the best way to do it. And here's how it works. It says, write the equation of line with slope of six that passes through the point 511. And what you do, or what I would do anytime I want to write the equation of a line, make sure you make this note for yourself, is I would simply write the formula y equals mx plus b. I would then plug in what I know. y is 11. m is slope, which is 6. x is 5 plus b. You then use algebra. 11 equals 30 plus b. You subtract your 30. I believe you get negative 19 equals b. You now have the value of b. And we know that the equation of line has m plugged in and b plugged in. So your answer would be y equals, here's your slope, 6x, here's your b, minus 19. How can you check that using your calculator quickly? Because remember, this helps you to do it, is plug in 5 for x and see if it matches. So 6 parentheses 5 minus 19 equals, there's your 11. It means that it works because that plugged in and got you what you needed. If you didn't do it right, you would not get that answer for your y, which means you made a mistake somewhere. Write the equation of the line with slope of negative 3 fourths passes through an 8, negative 1. Again, with this situation, they give you a y, a m, and a b. So all we do is get put y equals mx plus b. By the way, these are the easy ones, and they do get more difficult. y is negative 1. M is negative 3 fourths. X is 8 plus B. Using the multiplication skills that we have to have, multiply the 8 up, which is negative 24 over 4. I hope. I messed that up, I think, on the last one. That's 24 over 4, yep, yeah, plus B, which turns into negative 1 equals negative 6 plus B. You then add 6 to both sides, getting 5 as your answer and finishing it off with y equals negative 3 over 4x plus 5 because it's positive. And once again, I can take this thing and say y equals so negative 3 n over d4, sorry, you can't see it, times x, which is 8, um, plus 5 equals and notice I get the answer I need, which is negative one, so I know it works. Again, I recommend that you do a quick check on your calculator, but I also recommend that you make sure you show me this because if I don't see this, I don't give you credit. I'm not just gonna give you credit for being extremely smart because that's not going to get you through calculus. You'll have to show work. Parallel perpendicular, two lines are parallel if they have the same slope. If you don't remember that, write it down. The one that's tough is usually a perpendicular. Two lines are perpendicular if their slopes are opposite reciprocals. That is a compound definition. Opposite means positive slash negative. Reciprocals means that one, I'm sorry, three over four changes into four over three. So both of these things have to happen. You have to change the symbol and you have to flip the fraction over. All right, so find slopes that are parallel perpendicular to this. These are test questions, so it should be something you can do. You know that this slope is 5 thirds. Therefore, the parallel slope would be 5 thirds. The perpendicular slope would be make it negative and then flip it. Opposite reciprocal. So switch the sign, then flip the fraction. That would be your two slopes that you have. So 5 thirds would be parallel. Negative 3 fifths would be perpendicular. Over here, you know that your slope is 8, which means the parallel slope would be 8. Your perpendicular slope, I'll just put perp, would be take this thing and switch the sign, and then you flip it. Well, it's not a fraction, but it is a fraction because 8 is 8 over 1, which means it would be negative 1 over 8. This is your parallel slope. This is your perpendicular slope. That's what you are going to be doing for the test. Make sure you know it. To me, it's not a hard question to get, especially if you have a teacher sitting in front 40 minutes a day or so, and all you have to do is go ask them a question. 
these are the ones that you're going to see that are tricky, which is find the parallel and perpendicular. Well, it doesn't give me the slope. If you remember, I have to send my 5x over here first, so I get 2y equals negative 5x plus 8. I then divide all of my terms by 2, getting y equals negative 5 over 2x plus 4. That now gives me that the slope is negative 5 over 2. So my parallel would be negative 5 over 2 because parallel means same. My perpendicular will be switched to sign, so positive. I don't need to write a plus sign. And then 2 fifths. So parallel, perpendicular. Again, I don't think it's bad unless you don't practice and unless you're not using the teacher that's sitting in front wanting to answer every question you have. Algebra 2 level. This is where it gets more real because you notice that writing equations that ones we did first, I'll go back to this real quick, gave us the slope, gave us the point, that was it. Well, in this case, it'll say write the equation line that passes through a point and is perpendicular to this equation. Here's what you need. Anytime you're going to see write the equation of a line, it means you're going to do y equals mx plus b. I would write it. Then I would say, and hunt for two things. Do I have a slope? Do I have a point? I do have a point. The point is 6, negative 3. Do I have a slope? No. How do I find the slope? Well, I have to go through and put, let's see, 4x minus 3y equals 9. I have to send my 4x over, so negative 3y equals negative 4x plus 9. I have to divide everything by negative 3. Who cares about that because we only want the slope and you end up with positive 4 thirds x blah blah blah. So 4 thirds is my slope. Now you read because your slope is not 4 thirds because it wants it to be perpendicular to that slope which means I don't want 4 thirds. I want negative 3 fourths which is why it's very important that you understand how to do all that stuff because this is the algebra 2 level. Your review of algebra is simply your review on steroids. It means that everything is bigger, everything is better, it's more spectacular. But now that we have this, we're pretty much done. You just got to make sure you don't mess up. Negative 3 goes in for y. Negative 3 fourths goes in for m. 6 goes in for x plus b. Multiply up, so negative 3 equals negative 18 over 4 plus b. I don't like fractions, so the trick that I showed you that a lot of you don't like to use, this is definitely where it helps. I end up with negative 12, because that's 4 times 3, equals negative 18 plus 4b. I then add my 18, getting 6 equals 4b. I then divide by 4, not by 6, to get 6 over 4, or 3 over 2, equals b, I believe. I think it is. So what do I do with that? I'll just check real fast to make sure that I take the equation y equals negative 3 over 4x, because that was my slope, plus 3 over 2, and I check it with my point. So negative 3 over 4 times 6, nothing worse than messing up on video because it's there for life, uh, plus 3 n over d2 equals, hey, I got it right again. So here's the thing. You'll say, well, how do you know your slope is right? You have to trust that. We know that we took it and we found the slope of the graph. We know that our slope of the line. We also know that we made it perpendicular. If you made a mistake there, it's no good. But again, in general, as long as you did everything you're supposed to, that is it. I do, again, recommend that you get into the habit of doing it on paper and checking it on calculator. That way you actually are working out two things. I do not recommend doing it on calculator because what that's going to do is make you a failing genius because you're going to feel like you know all the answers but I'm not going to give you any credit because I need to see this. Maybe not as descriptive because I was nowhere near this um, efficient until I had to teach it but I need to see the work so make sure you're doing it on paper because without that work you're not getting points which means you're just going to argue with me as you fail the class. Here's another one. Write the equation of the line passing through negative 8, 9, negative 12, 20, neg yeah, negative 12, 27. Once again, once it says write the equation of the line, I'm going to put y equals mx plus b because this is my work, work point. Then I'm going to ask myself, do I have a slope and do I have a point? Well, I don't have a slope. I do have two points to choose from. I usually just automatically pick the first, so I'm just going to say negative 8, negative 9. How do I find the slope? Well, we learned this. I'm going to put this into a table, negative 8, negative 9, negative 12, 27. I'm going to do 27 minus negative 9, negative 12 minus negative 8, which turns into 36 over, 
is that negative 4? Which I believe is negative 9. Let me check myself. 27, because again, I also know it the other way. 27 minus negative 9 over negative 12 minus negative 8 is negative 9. Look at that. I still got it. So we have a slope. We have a point, And so now we plug it in. Negative 9 goes in for y. Negative 9 goes in for m. Negative 8 goes in for x. And then we work it out the way we have before. I believe 9 times 8 is 72. So we subtract 72, getting negative 81 equals b. And then we hope that we get it right. And we'll check that out. y equals negative 9x minus 81, which would be your final answer. And the good news is we have two points. And I can show you that uh, copy and paste thing. So we have negative 9 times negative 8 minus 81 equals that's the answer I need. Now watch this to make my life easy because we want to be efficient. I highlight that equation I just typed in. Actually, I guess I can't do it because it doesn't really work. So never mind that. I'll show you how to do that later. Anyway, negative 12 because we want to try the other one to make sure both of them work. Minus 81 equals 27, which is what I'm looking for. And I know I can hand it in knowing I got it right. What you want to do, especially if you have the time, is make sure you check it. The last question which again is your Algebra 1 review on steroids, will now take what we just did and it will give you a variable inside of another variable. So find the value of k. So that the graph of kx plus 5y equals 8 is parallel to um, 7 negative k and 9 negative 4. Parallel. So here's what I'm going to do. I am first off going to see what the slope of this is because we're talking parallel. Once you see keywords, keywords lead to key things. So therefore, what I'm going to do is say, what is the slope of this? So I'm going to set up kx. And again, this is more than likely scratch work. So I'll do it off to the side plus 5y equals 8. I am then going to send my x over there. So 5y equals negative kx plus 8. I am then going to divide everything by 5 because hopefully we've practiced that. Getting y equals negative k over 5x plus 8 over 5. So we know that the slope is, and be careful catching the negative, negative k over 5. Parallel means I want negative k over 5. I don't flip and switch it. I just keep it as it is. Now it says it wants the slope of this to be parallel to the slope of that. So let's just set up the slope because this is the slope we want because it's saying it's parallel to it and they gave us a point. So what I'm going to do now is set it up 7 negative k and 9 negative 4 which means we have negative 4 minus negative k 9 minus 7 that's just me setting up my slope equals negative actually we want to put it on top so negative k over 5 let me look back through here I think we saw this before hold on I think it was in the day before his work. Hold on. Let me pause this video so I don't waste your time while I throw everything around. Found it. This problem. It was where they gave you a variable and they wanted you to find out the, the slope that matched and you had to set up the slope and then set it equal to that and go through. Well, it's the same thing as this. The difference is they gave us two variables or they made it more difficult by giving us something over here. So we now have, and I hope this works, let's see. Setting this up, it's going to be negative 4 plus k, right? Because that switches over 2 equals negative k over 5. We then have to cross multiply, which means we get 5 times the whole thing equals negative 2k. Keeping our fingers crossed, negative 20 plus 5k equals negative 2k. To me, it'll be better to move my k's over here, even though I like my k's to be positive. So negative 20 equals negative 7k, because I subtracted 5. And then dividing by 7, you get 20 over 7 equals k. Nice, ugly problem. Can you check it? Sure. Would I check it? No. This needs to be practiced. Um, there, is no <laughs> there is no way to really check unless you're going to be pretty much doing um, high-level engineering and plugging wires into other wires. I can check it on these because it's easy enough to plug in a point and I know how it works. But you have a 20 over 7 plugging in for this part here as well as this part here and you're checking everything. I probably wouldn't do it. But 
what you can do is use the homework to master the process and make sure that you don't make any crazy mistakes outside of that. I will talk to you all later. Have a good day. And again, don't forget to practice. Good luck.